All right, so go ahead and jump right in and get us rolling. Okay, so you're going to open your Photoshop up, and then we are going to grab our images. So you just hit open. And I have them right here, which you guys are already going to have. Um, so this image is from Kansas, the chalk monuments that are out there. I uh, picked it because it's a simple image. It'll be easy to grasp some of these concepts because we don't have things like trees. Oh, yeah, trees. <laughs> the, the bane <laughs> of my existence. Um, <laughs> And then these are a little bit redder files because it's shot with a modified camera. So um, we're going to mess with the color temperature a bit, which even on non-modified cameras, you'll probably do this anyway, because sometimes you ha it's too blue or, you know, whatnot. So you might want to mess with it a little. Um, so for these modified cameras, I tend to bring it down into the 28-ish range. Um, and you can see that it's already kind of making it more like what we're used to seeing with the Milky Way shot. Um, the next things I'm gonna do is try to bring out your foreground a little bit more. So for that, I actually bring the shadows all the way up. And then I do bring the shadows down or the highlights down. Um, I just like how it brings some of these details back here, but it's also kind of dark, so then I will bring the exposure up a little bit too to kind of mitigate that a bit. Um, and you can already tell from here, a lot of the foreground is visible now where it wasn't before. Um, and every camera is gonna be a little bit different too. So you wanna play around with uh, and know your equipment because some, these Nikon cameras really have great dynamic range. So I can shoot these a little bit on the underexposed side and it works. You might not be able to do that. So just, it's one of those things, just, you know, know your equipment. Um, the other sliders that I will play with in your, the initial edits is clarity and dehaze. Um, these are sliders you want to be kind of careful with. They can um, easily make things look too crunchy or very like soft. Um, and depending on the mood you want, um, you know, you can change it up. This particular foreground, I actually kind of like the clarity to be a bit on the negative side because it's got a pretty harsh line up on the top here. Can you zoom um, in a little bit more for us? Because of the streaming yeah. element of this, we yes. don't see it with as much clarity. So zooming in and seeing that detail change would be nice. Yeah. So this this one has a bit a bit harsh line to begin with. So I tend to drop the clarity on the this foreground image a bit. And you can see if you go too high, how it gets quite crunchy. And I'm just not a fan of that. So I will tend to knock that down a bit. Um, dehaze is another one. Uh, it's, if you go too much with it, it, it gets a little, <laughs> little crazy. And, and then it, the other way too. Um, so this one I tend to be real light with. Um, so your foreground shots is something similar to that. Um, just so you can get the detail out of it. So before you come out for the foreground shot, just asking some questions here. So they're going through, they got their foreground shot and they're working in Adobe Camera Raw before they even start in Photoshop. What are some of the key things that they wanna make sure is popping before they say, okay, let's open it in Photoshop on the foreground image specifically? Yeah, so for the foreground, it, like you, you wanna make sure that you can see all your details. Um, so like this has some, uh, cr I don't know if they're kind of, they're not really canyons. They're it's kind of like canyons a little wash where the water. Yeah, like catch a wash. Like I, I'm can't think of the word. And these little bushes too. So, like uh, even on this one, I might actually bring it up a little bit more. Um, and you'll see what I do with this later. But I like to make sure that you can see everything in here um, that was hidden before. Um, actually, this shot's kind of neat because there's a little bit of moonlight on here. And you oh, really? See it there. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's, that's the reasoning behind, you know, bringing up the details in the foreground. And then you'll see how we blend those together, make a match a little bit better later. Okay. So show um, us the sliders again that you played around with. Just summarize it again. Scroll to the top of this. For everyone who's using Adobe Camera Raw for the first time at home, they might see a different section of the screen. So scroll that bar to the very top to kind of remind them what part you're on. So you're under basic. You yep, have under it basic. opened up basic, and then under basic, there's all these sliders, very similar to Lightroom. And which ones do you need a key on? Yeah, uh, temp color, temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows. Um, actually, I take that back. I didn't touch the contrast, so yeah, that. no contrast, just exposure, highlights, shadows. Yeah, shadows, and sometimes you can use the contrast. This one I don't think needs it. 
um, Clarity, D. Hayes. Oh, one more. Under detail, a noise reduction. Um, oh. I tend to put this up to about 20 on everything that I do. Really? It so just, it's just kind of it, easy 20. Yeah, just like easy 20. I find, at least with this camera, it tends to take the, uh, the initial edge off with the noise in it without destroying the detail. Ah. Um, oops. <laughs> so that's good yeah. detail for us on the live stream. We can see it much better. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I, I like noise reduction to be around 20. You start to get more than that. And it really starts to take away from the, the, the fine details in the image itself. Um, so I find that the 20 range is a good number for uh, noise reduction anyway. And I'll do that. Um, even to these tracked shots too. So I'll do that right now since we're going on to the next one. So basic and detail. Those are the yeah. only two ones that you open up. They're like drop downs that open up more options of menus to change and detail and basic are it. Yeah, for for something like simple like this, yes. Okay. Have cool. have I gone into color mixer, color grading and things like that? Yeah, I have. Um, but this particular image, it's a nice simple one, so I don't think we have to go that far. <laughs> Do you think our image number three will use something like that, where you go into color grading, so we get an example of seeing how that happens? Yeah, we could do that. Awesome. Um, I'll go through my library of images and see if I get a good example for that. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yes. <laughs> All right, so now we're on the sky image. Yes, the sky image. And we'll zoom in here so you can see how beautiful tracked images are. Because, and because I love it. <laughs> Astro modified images are. You see the Lagoon Nebula popping without yep. any effort at all. You can see all that red in there. Um, and this was just a minute and a half exposure at ISO 1000. I, I, um, track shots are interesting. Like you can, you can, I tend to align these very quickly. So I'll do like a minute and a half, two minute shots at a little bit higher ISO, like a thousand, um, because I'm not perfect with the alignment. But um, you can still see how great these end up being. Um, so for the sky image, I do the same thing. Bring the highlights down so you can get some of this detail that's hidden in there. Bring the shadows up and then also bring the exposure up to your liking. Um, I'll, we'll start it there. And the same thing with clarity and dehaze. Um, with the sky shot, uh, you can go a little more aggressive on the dehaze. Uh, you know, to bring off some of these details in the um, different parts of the Milky Way here. But interesting, well, another thing, thing in, interesting thing that Hayes does is like, you see how it changes the color? Yeah, very blue. Like, it makes it very blue. So sometimes you might have to go back up into your, your tint and temperature and then kind of bring that back. Uh -huh more of the warmer color because some I, I find that dehaze uh, however the algorithm works it, a lot of times it, it it'll make things really blue or um along that line mm -hmm. so you might have to readjust your color temperature a bit to you know warm it back up so when you see the benefit of the dehaze bringing out detail in the band of the milky way you realize okay it's worth being up this high on dehaze but now i've got a color correct that blue cobalt look that shows up yeah all right so so I go back and forth with that. And then I, yeah, and then detail, I already applied some noise reduction. So cool. these are about the, the very basic edits I will do to a track shot and then the foreground shot um, using the sliders in Camera Raw. So, so again, everybody, this is Camera Raw. And when it opens up a raw image, Photoshop opens this up automatically. And it is a pop-up over Photoshop. And you make some edits here. And then how do you commit those edits? So you can export them if you want, um, which actually I think we'll do. I'll make them. I, I always work in TIFFs. Um, so there's a couple options you can go from here. Like you can select both of these and then just hit open and it's going to open both of them in Photoshop. But I like to actually export them out. And there's this little, little icon up in the corner here. And I like to work in TIFFs. So I save everything in TIFFs. Um, they just work great for me. Um, you select the folder you want to put it in, give it a name. And I am, I'm really, I really need to work on my naming convention. <laughs> it's one of those things that if you don't work on from the very beginning, you don't have one. And yeah, I kind of had one, but then I got away from it. And then I totally blew up my naming convention. So, yeah. So <laughs> like I'll call something generic sometimes like this and, <laughs> It, it, usually I can find it, but sometimes not. I, 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 I know some people are a lot more organized than I am. So and more <laughs> Jeff power Harmon to you. comes to mind. 
<laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> so then, um, when you no. look at your settings for the TIFF, do you make any changes on those settings? I, I don't. I usually just let it like the resolutions that you know, three hundred pixels per inch. Making sure that this is on sixteen bits a channel. Uh, sometimes, for some reason, my computer saves them out as eight bit, um, and I don't know why. That is a thing, but it does. And then no um, compression on the TIFF format. Yeah, you too. don't want any compression. So that's about it. And then you just hit save okay. and it'll export those two out. Um, and then we'll open those two in Photoshop. So once it's done here, I'll hit done. And then we go back to open. Oh, and we find our, and I put it in the same folder. It makes so it then easy. You, yeah, so then you can open up. If you hit command and click, you can select more than one. And control and then, click for those of you on a PC. Yep. And then we'll open them up. So now this is where the fun begins. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and maximize that screen. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm excited to see. Screen. Now, we've done the slider <laughs> stuff that most of us are all familiar with, but Photoshop scares a lot of you. I know it. And so let's find out how simple it actually can be to use Photoshop. You, when you come out of this lesson, you're probably going to be able to do only this. And if that's the case, that's fine. You've learned how to edit your Star Trek images in Photoshop. You won't have the skill set to do everything in Photoshop. I don't even have the skill set to do everything in Photoshop. It's a massive program. So just, I don't either. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you do it all that you've been using only this for decades. And so just take a breath, everybody, and realize that you're not going to be a master of Photoshop, but you're going to be a master of one specific use, one specific skill in Photoshop, and you will not fail. You will know where to find the menu. You will know where to find the button, and you can change the graphic the way that you want to following Mary Beth's version here. So let's go with your method, Mary Beth. Where do you start? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is on your background image, you go down to these this layer tab right here, and you see where it says background. Yeah. Now, um, is, does it matter if it's your foreground image or sky image? No, nah, I like to do the foreground on the bottom, and then the sky. Oh, actually, ooh, I'm gonna switch that around. But so, okay, this doesn't really matter. You can do either or. Either but or. What, so basically, what we're gonna do is on whatever your base image is that we're gonna build. Okay. Um, you want to take it off this background. You want to make it a layer. Um, so otherwise. It, it, I'll show you what it does if you have a leave it as background. So show us um, again what you did there. Did you right click? I double clicked on you it. You double so clicked you, on oh, the square image there yeah, on the left. Where it says foreground. Okay, now. so where you saw background, you double click that and it gave you that pop up window. Yeah, except now, oh. Oh, because you know what? it's been adjusted. It's Go to been, the other yeah. one. So the other one here. So yeah, so if you click on background, double click on it, ah, okay. it brings up the new layer and then you want to give it a name. So like, this is the sky layer. You hit OK. So now it's a layer that you can work with versus now, a background. And that's why that um, thing was popping up, everybody. When you click on something that you can work with that's not locked, then it offers you all of those different filters and edits that you can make to it. But since it was locked before, it just wanted to ask if you wanted to make a new layer. Yep. So cool. perfect. So what we're going to do, um, so like we'll take the sky image. Now, these are the shortcuts. You can also access it up here where you're under the select. Like you can select all, which is what we're going to do, which is command A. Um, so you want to select all and then command C, which is going to copy it. And then you click back over to your foreground layer and then you're going to put command V, which is going to paste it. Simple enough. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully everybody got that. And that, now that's, you're done. Yeah, you're done. That's it. That's all we're doing. Um, so, so now you can see it. Now we have two layers. We have layer one, which we're going to change to sky. And then we got layer two, which is a foreground. Um, I like to have the sky underneath the foreground. So I just drag it underneath it. And I'll show you why in a second here. So now what we got to do is we got to get rid of that sky we're not going to use. So we go back to the foreground layer. You always make sure you're the, the biggest mistake people make, uh, or one of it, is making edits on the wrong layer. So you want to make sure that you are on the correct layer, which you can see it highlights yes. it when you click on it. Um, this should be relatively simple. And the more recent versions of Photoshop, these selection tools have gotten really, really, really good. 
Um, so we're going to try this first with uh, the quick, <laughs> see like that. Look so quick easy. selection tool is pretty much all you need. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you can see with the marching ants here, that's an old term, by the way, marching, yeah, marching ants. ants, the selection yeah. dots that are all around. But you there. can see here how well there's, there's maybe a couple edges that it missed here, but that's, you know, minor, but how well just quick selection tool was able to grab this rock formation. <laughs> Man, I remember when you used to have to lasso tool that pixel by pixel. Yeah. So it's actually really quite good. Um, it didn't grab like this over here. Um, but what I'm going to show you here, because this particular image has quite a bit of light pollution on the bottom here, I'm not going to totally cut this all the way out. Um, I'm going to erase it down to about here. And uh, we're, we're going to blend that because I find that blending that's a little bit easier. And then you can um, keep some of these grass.